I'm running an indie anime studio and it seriously helped me level up my animations for my channel. It all started with just me making animations in my bedroom. I would be drawing, coloring, editing, and doing everything by myself. Now I've got a team of voice actors, animators, and freelancers helping me out with my indie anime project, and I'm managing all of them by myself. For those of you looking to run your own team of animators by yourself, this is how I do it. First off, I want to state that I'm using a very loose version of the Japanese anime industry's way of making animations. When I was working by myself, I was basically doing every single part of the process by myself. Director, animator, coloring, backgrounds, sound design, you name it, I was doing it solo. Eventually, I hit my breaking point when I started an animation in October of 2021 and didn't upload it until October of 2022. Yes, that is insane, but honestly, the video did pretty well for itself, so I'm still proud of it. I had to set aside my own pride and admit that I couldn't do it on my own. So I hired a handful of freelancers who offered to help out with different shots here and there, and eventually that small group turned into a larger team of animators helping me out with different parts of the anime pipeline. All of a sudden, videos that would have taken a year to produce are slated to be finished in less than four months, which is already really impressive on its own. For most people, starting off running a team of animators is a very daunting task. Thankfully, I've already dedicated almost seven years of my life to running my content creation workflow. So I basically used what I learned for my personal projects and I scaled it to be able to manage my entire team of voice actors and animators. My entire content creation pipeline is run through Notion, which is an all-in-one organizational tool that does everything from task management, project tracking, to-do lists, note-taking, and so much more. This video is not sponsored by Notion. I actually use their product legitimately to manage at least three different YouTube channels and multiple video projects at a time. I made an entire video breaking down my Notion template for animation content creation, which you can find linked below. I also sell a couple of Notion templates that you can use for your own project management. Every single one of my animation projects lives in this project database. Within each project page, I can easily brainstorm ideas, write out my script, and also designate each and every animation shot, or animation cut as it's called, into its own individual subpage. In this example, the full animation is broken up into 57 individual shots, each of which has been assigned to someone on the team or passed around between different team members. Within each shot page, I can easily detail out everything about the shot, from the storyboard, a description of the scene, how the animator will complete and export the animation, and so on. I can even provide helpful resources like character reference sheets, screenshots of other anime for reference, links to Clip Studio Paint project files, animation layout paper templates, and even an individual Google Drive folder that they can use to upload their finished animations. As you can see here, each page has several tags that I can use to track the progress and assignment of each shot. That way I know exactly what stage each shot is at, as well as the difficulty, whether I paid the animator for that shot, or if it's unassigned and needs to be sent to someone else in the pipeline. Basically, if I have unassigned shots, I will reach out to different animators and allow them to choose what shot they want to work on, depending on their availability, how difficult the shot is, and what stage the animation is at. From there, it's a lot of emailing and messaging behind the scenes so that each animator can update me on their progress, send me rough drafts to critique, and answer any questions that they may have. Otherwise, my team's pretty much able to work on their own, which frees me up to make progress on other parts of the animation. I've even got custom views set up so that I can get a god's eye view of the whole project and estimate how much needs to get done. Again, if you want to check out my Notion templates, you'll get a simplified version of this project template so that you can organize your shots too. Everything is linked to the Google Drive folder that I've set up for this project. I basically have a template folder that I copy and it has all of the necessary subfolders inside of it. Each shot has its own unique folder, which is then separated into different subfolders for the different stages of animation like first keyframe, line art, coloring, and so on. This way, I can keep track of each stage of the shot, and all of the animation exports are separated and labeled, just in case I wanted to do a behind-the-scenes video where I show the before and after of a shot. 
this cycle will continue to run until eventually the animation is completed. Now, let's move on to the actual animation pipeline itself. As a reminder, I am using a heavily simplified version of the Japanese anime production pipeline. This is the start to finish process of how Japanese anime is made. I just combined a few parts because I'm wearing so many hats in the process. Also for the industry people who want to nitpick at me, a lot of what I'm going to describe next is also very generalized so that it's easy for all audiences to understand. Most of my information comes from various sources such as Tonari Animation, Dong Chang, Nika CH, and Crunchyroll, as well as general information from videos like the Anime Man or Gigax videos on visiting an anime studio. To start everything off, I write the script in Google Docs, Notion or Obsidian, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Everything eventually ends up in a Notion project page. I typically write out the script in a loose variation of screenplay format, which is typically how movie scripts are written out. Out of all the writing styles I've tried over the years, the screenplay format has been the best way for me to write out exactly how I want each scene to play out. It's almost like I am storyboarding and creating the composition already in my head with just words. And yes, it's not perfect screenplay format, but since it's for my eyes only, that's perfectly fine. Next, I create the storyboard. In Japanese anime, this is known as the ekonte stage. I use this image template for storyboarding, but you can use pretty much any storyboarding template that you want. This one includes the cut slash shot number, this box here to draw the storyboard, this section to describe any kind of action or instruction, and then the dialogue for that particular shot. I used to not actually time out the shots since a lot of stuff tended to change during post-production, but lately I've been getting a stopwatch out and trying to time out the different shots, and it's been a really great way to estimate how long the entire video will be. At this point, this stage of the animation would have been called the layout stage, which is a more detailed version of the storyboards that focuses on composition, element placement, and so on. As you can see, my storyboards tend to be very detailed and showcase a lot of layout composition already, so I tend to just combine it with the storyboarding stage. This is pretty helpful when I was working alone as I was able to skip the layout stage and just go straight on to the next portion. I've found that it's been especially helpful for my freelance animators because they can just take a look at my storyboards and they get a good sense of the composition, how I want the characters to look in the scene, and how I want the lighting to be. Not every animation director does this, as some just do stick figures while others do fully finished drawings as their storyboards. Here's an example from one of my storyboard shots. There's already quite a lot of detail and direction that I put into the storyboard. I gave this to the animator and they were able to easily understand the assignment and produced this rough animation based on my boards. Once each animator has a shot assigned, they will go through and do a rough pass of the animation. In traditional anime production, this is called the first key or first keyframe stage. In anime, the most important drawings are called keyframes, which are usually the extreme moments of poses. For example, in this shot, we can have a 1, a starting pose, a 2, a frame sort of breaking down the motion in between, and a 3, the ending pose. These keyframes are basically the building blocks of the entire animation. Sometimes shots need to go through revision checks to make sure that everything looks on model and the motion looks correct. At this point in time, I'm handling the roles of episode director and animation director. I'm not as familiar with the terminology or the actual process at this part, but basically I go through and make revisions and corrections in order to make sure that everything is as consistent as possible between shots. This can include something as small as asking an animator to correct the shape of a character's glasses, all the way to completely overhauling the given keyframe so that it more closely matches the character reference sheet. Once everything passes through revision checks, we get to the cleanup stage. In the anime pipeline, I'm combining the line art stage with the in-between stage, which basically means that the artist will clean up and trace the final lines with clean lines, either using a brush or a curve tool, as well as drawing in-between frames, which will make the animation look smoother. 
Of note, we are animating in 24 frames per second on twos and threes. This simply means that each drawing will be shown on screen for an average of two to three frames before moving to the next drawing. If you're looking for a technical terminology for frames per second, this is basically the same as saying we're animating at eight frames per second or 12 frames per second. Once all of the frames are drawn, they go through the coloring stage. All of the flat colors are set here. I could go into a whole separate discussion on coloring alone, but basically in anime production, the lines are converted into these aliased pixel lines in programs like Redis Paint Man, OpenTunes, or a similar software. And that allows the artist to use the paint bucket tool to fully color in the lines without worrying about stray pixels or changes in transparency in the line art. It just fills everything up completely. This is also where lines can get adjusted or fixed by the coloring team if there's some errors or gaps from the previous step. These alias lines are then blurred later on in the process using After Effects and OLM Smoother. For my purposes, I'm using a custom Clip Studio Paint auto action developed by Nika CH in order to blur the lines within Clip Studio Paint. This way I can just skip the blurring step and just import the files straight into my video editor of choice. Next, I export the image sequences or the individual animation drawings as PNG files, although sometimes people don't recommend that. According to Dong Chang, at least the way that he does his process, anime cells can be exported as Targa files, and they're imported into After Effects to be used with plugins such as OLM Smoother. Unfortunately, I do not have After Effects, so I import the files into HitFilm Pro after I blur them manually. I'm personally more used to doing 2D compositing and After Effects style work in HitFilm Pro, since it's like a combination of Premiere and After Effects, so I tend to use that more. To be openly transparent, I do not fully recommend this software to everybody because historically it performs really, really poorly compared to other software, but I've been using it for so long that I really can't do any other compositing in any other software. Also, if you go to the HitFilm subreddit, you will see that 99% of the posts are just people complaining about the software. In terms of anime compositing, there are several channels online that will give you some really great insight on how to composite anime shots together. I personally recommend the tutorials by channels like Nika CH, Make Babies, or Manu Mercurial. The general idea is that you take the flat colors of your exported sequence and use color correction and certain effects to combine it with the background and match the mood of the overall shot. For example, in this shot, the character doesn't match the background or the scene at all. But once I change the color correction, adjust the lighting, and adding things like shadows and glow effects to him, all of a sudden, this becomes a much more cohesive anime shot. Finally, there's some extra blurring and compositing added to the shot in order to give it that quote-unquote anime look. Again, I'm relying on Nika CH. They have an amazing tutorial on how to do something like this. My compositing workflow changes from video to video, so I don't really have a definitive explanation to give you just yet, but maybe in the future, once I've found a workflow I'm happy with, I'll make a separate video about it. Just make sure you guys hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when that video comes out. But yeah, I just have to repeat these compositing steps for every single shot of the video. Oh boy. At the same time that I'm doing the animations, I'm also keeping track of the background shots that I'm working on, as well as working with my voice actors to make sure that they've finished recording all their lines. I might make a separate video on how I do backgrounds now, because it's very similar to how webtoon artists use backgrounds. During the compositing and editing stages, I also lay the voice acting track, the background music track, and all the sound design, including sound effects and foley. Most of my current sound library comes from sites like Epidemic Sound, but occasionally I'll record my own foley, such as clothing movements or placing a cup on my desk. Once all the audio is mixed and everything is edited together, that's basically it. The animation's done. And this is the part where I sit at my computer, set the video to full screen, and watch my finished creation. This is honestly my favorite part of the process, is seeing the final animation play out on the big screen. No matter how late it is, no matter how much work I've put into it, when it comes to just sitting back and watching my work come to life, I just get filled with immense satisfaction and joy. This 
This is the reason I love doing animations. And then the cycle continues and I start the next animation all over again. Be sure to check out my latest animations. They'll be up on the screen now. Thanks for visiting the Mind Palace and I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye.